Hello and welcome to Best in UC TV. We're checking in today from New Jersey. I'm Heather Clancy, your host, and with me is Al Harnish with Eastern Datacom. Hi. Now, Al, um, I'm embarrassed to say it, but I've been covering video conferencing for a very, very long time, like something like 15 years. The possibilities have always intrigued me, and I've never really understood why video conferencing has, you know, been so slow to take off. I, I guess part of it's been money, but you know, I'm, I'm sure there's some, been some infrastructure issues. Can you, can you tell me why now? What's, what's really helping this move along? Yeah, so what's happened with video conferencing is um, if you go back 10 years or so, it was reliant on a technology called ISDN. ISDN was something that was uh, fairly expensive. A, a typical installation might spend four or $500 a month hmm. just to have that infrastructure in place, mm -hmm. even without using mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And then every time you went to use uh, those lines for video conferencing, the cost might be 5 or $6 a minute to have the call. On top of that. Wow. On top of it. Mm -hmm. So the other problem was because they were only used for video conferencing, it wasn't easy to test ISDN. So somebody would go in to use it after a month of it not being used, and one of the lines didn't work. And then it would throw the whole thing off. So what's really changed dramatically is the availability of bandwidth. So with the advent of the internet and broadband capabilities, for example, we have here a, um, a 100 megabit internet connection for a little over $100 a month. Okay. So, and that's a fixed cost. I could be on videos 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and all it costs me is $100 a month. So that's one aspect of, uh, you know, what, what's different between 10 years ago and today. Okay, I think there's also, in my opinion, some cultural stuff that's happened, right? People are more used to video. They're, they're used to seeing YouTube videos. Uh, you know, before if someone put a camera in your face, you'd freak out. Now you're probably going to mug for it, have fun. You right. video, you probably video your cat, et cetera. Right. But to sort of, so make this real for me, right? This infrastructure is in place. We're hearing a lot about video conferencing. Tell me about an application that's really bringing it home for everyone. Why is this so great for us? So an application I think a lot of people can relate to might be a judge doing arraignments of, of prisoners. So in the past, the jail would have to get a you know an armor-plated bus, get 10 inmates and 20 guards, and they'd have to bring the, uh, the prisoners to the courtroom. Sure. And have to go through metal detectors, potentially endangering the public and all that kind of stuff. Now what happens is the judge sits in a judge's chamber, sits in front of a camera and a monitor, and the prisoners stay in the prison and they, they go for their arraignment via video. Hmm. And one of the advantages, again, that, that technology has allowed is high definition. So we all hear about high definition, we see it on our televisions, and we can appreciate the, the improved quality um, of, the, of the image. And one of the things, for example, a judge can see with prisoners is, you know, the little squint or the bead of sweat or something like that. It sounds kind of funny, but if a guy's lying, the, the quality is good enough that you can get that sense. It's, it's true to life that you can get that sense of, um, you, you know, their actual reaction. Isn't that system, though, pretty expensive? I mean, how, how can, can a public system pay for that it, you know it's hard to find the budget for other things right, right. now. so uh, the the price like everything else that the, there's a wide variety of prices and there are some products some of cisco we've seen a lot of cisco on television um cisco has a a very high-end solution that that corporate america um tends to gravitate gravitate to that that could be hundreds of thousands of yeah, dollars. Ridiculous. And then on the low end, there are companies like LifeSize, where LifeSize has a family of products that is more modestly priced and it's geared more toward the small to medium business. And the quality, regardless of the price, the quality of the image always stays the same. So right. the cost of the of the units varies based on features and functionality in terms of inputs and connections and stuff. But the picture quality is always top notch. Mm -hmm. So life size makes that part of its sort of go to market, if you will. There, right. That's okay. part of their philosophy. Yeah. Always give the best picture possible, even if it's on a lower yeah. cost unit. And by lower cost, I'm talking a few thousand dollars. Okay. So it's very yeah. affordable. I, I don't know about you, but but grainy video is probably one of the most annoying things. So I, I would definitely make that a, a, a selling, a, you know, sort of a, a procurement point if you're um, if you're thinking about something like this. So we've got a public safety application. Um, you know, what if other opportunities? I think we were talking about, you know, if you think about another area where, where there's a profound need to help extend 
if you will, the services, it would be education. And are right. there any applications there that you can So education about? is a big opportunity. At the college level, there's lots. At, at, at the K through 12 levels, um, we have one application we spoke to recently where um, there were two schools, two sister schools, and um, they were looking to, um, to keep a class alive. And their, their rule is they have to have 15 kids for the, um, for the class. And in these two schools, they only had 10 students in one school and six students in another. So the thought was if they can combine the two classes, they would meet their objective of, of 15 uh, kid minimum mm -hmm. and still be able to have the class. So what they were looking to do is um, have the teacher in one class with 10 live human beings in the class and have a video screen showing the remote side, which would be the six classes. Huh. So if somebody has a question in a remote class, they raise their hand, the teacher would see that the pupil raise their hand, and they would, they would call on as if they were in the same room. Hmm. Now, that, that was to save a class. I, the, the logic also goes that you could add more classes and maybe even create a new revenue stream. Right. Potentially. And, and we even brought up that they might have another school in another district sure. that might have three kids. Let's say it's a Chinese class. They, they might have three kids in this district that want to learn a Chinese class. So now you could just have two remote locations, and maybe the school can charge for it to help offset okay. the cost of the equipment. Hmm. And then once you have the equipment, maybe they want to do a, if it's a Chinese class, for example, maybe they want to do kind of like a virtual field trip. So now you use that same equipment and you connect to a remote site, perhaps in China. Maybe they have something on the Great Wall. And there, there are, um, there are, facilities out there that have cameras available for educational purposes. Like I know there's one in the Amazon, um, there might be one you know, on a Great Wall or something huh. like that. So it's a nice way to ex expand the class outside of the classroom. Okay, let's step out of this, the public sector now and into the business world. How would you use this new capability for a collaboration setting, if you will, or a collaboration opportunity that maybe was not possible before? <laughs> either because someone wasn't there on site or, um, you know, because it was hard, like you said before, it's kind of hard sometimes when you're talking on the phone to know what the person is really thinking. Do they really buy into your idea or, or do they not believe right, you? Right. So again, if you take the, the advent of, of plenty of bandwidth, in fact, we have some customers that say, I'm concerned about putting video on my data network. So our answer is for $100 a month or $150 a month, bring in a broadband circuit mm -hmm. completely independent of your own data network, your corporate data network, and just have nothing on that broadband connection except your video conferencing application. So if you have plenty of bandwidth, you might have two locations that, um, that have a need to video between people, and you might set up a video room. Yeah. So you, you might have a video um, set up in one room where the camera is on and a video set up in the other room where the camera's on and they're connected and it might be for the entire eight hour day of that, uh, for that business. So if somebody in one location calls somebody in another location or emails them, they might say, meet me in the video room. And now they walk in, they don't have to touch anything, it's just up and running, they can sit down in a couple of chairs, talk back and forth and have the benefit of seeing you know, their, their, their facial interaction and, and um, you know, getting a better sense for, for the uh, a live conversation. Great. Well, I'm sure we're going to try that in the future as we build out more episodes of this show. Thank you for joining us today. Thank Actually, you for having you, me. I should thank you for letting me come to your facility <laughs> and tape. Um, and thank you for joining us on Best in UC TV.